welcome back to what once was an organized and sane channel. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining me. Today I am recovering from COVID-19. It got me in the ghoulies. <laughs> It was a particularly phlegmy variant, whatever it was, and at the very tail end of it. But because of that, we're going to have a really stripped back, back to basics, almost naked. It's so stripped. Um, old school version of a Leader Norms video, which is essentially me sitting in front of you and nattering about books. Tea is encouraged. That is my serving suggestion for this video. Blankets are welcomed. A notebook is mandatory so you can write down all the recommendations and I'm just going to try and create a cozy atmosphere which is what I need if nothing else. Um, so related note, at the beginning of this pandemic um, I was about to turn 30 and I was really excited about my 30th birthday because I was going to treat it like my wedding. Oh, I don't plan on having kids. I don't really plan on having a wedding, um, but I did want to cause my friends much stress and expense by uh, throwing an inconvenient and massive 30th birthday party. I didn't get to do that, and maybe that's for the best. Um, but um, I was really sad. We were in lockdown and we didn't know how long it was gonna go on for. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Uh, and Craig got me this lovely birthday present to cheer me up. It was this very cute DIY voucher uh, for a guided bookshop tour of London when the pandemic is over. And I quote in the accompanying letter, in a few months. It's now been two years uh, and we were finally able to go back to London, which we've now moved away from, and go to some of those bookshops. Craig was very sweet and he looked up all of the really cool bookshops in London, um, wrote their addresses, how long it took to get between each place, um, and it was gonna be a great bookshop tour. However, when I cracked this out in the harsh light of 2020, I realized a lot of these bookshops have closed sobering. Some of them have moved to other towns and places because of London rent, but there were still some that were open and we thought it'd be a really nice idea uh, in my birthday week to go back and revisit some of them and Craig was very kind and treated me to some books. So I filmed some footage and I want to take you on a, that virtual tour and show you the books that I bought because books excite me. <laughs> like nothing else. Um, we actually only got round to five or six of these bookshops uh, out of 14 <laughs> because I couldn't, once I was inside a bookshop, it was very hard to peel me away. So if you would like a fantasy bookshop tour with me of some of the great bookshops in London, this doesn't cover all of them, but it is some of them, um, or you are thinking of visiting London and you're not sure where to start, come on a journey with me, let's go. So if you ask me for a bookshop recommendation and it's your first time in London, I will no doubt say words on the water as your first stop. It's really easy to find, it's really central, it's on a canal and it's in a pirate ship. <laughs> okay, it is a canal boat, but it does have a resident parrot and it does have a pirate flag. So who are you to nitpick? That's what I say. Uh, this is Words on the Water, it's beautiful. It's got a live stage. It's tiny, but it's got a lovely stock of books inside. And we had a really cozy time browsing there. I ended up picking a secondhand copy of The Illustrated Mum by Jacqueline Wilson. This was one of the first harrowing books I ever read as a child. It's definitely one of her big tear jerkers. And I was recently watching Lucy Wood do a reading vlog of reading one of Jacqueline Wilson's new ones. And it made me really nostalgic. And I think this one would also be really interesting to reread because I have tattoos now and I thought like, the mum having tattoos, I was like, oh, naughty. And now I am an illustrated <laughs> mum of books. Um, I just think it's gonna be a really interesting one. And owning Jacqueline Wilson books is, is really exciting because most of the Jacqueline Wilson books I had growing up were borrowed from the library. I barely owned any myself. So actually having them in my house gives me like a little spark of excitement that I, I can't wait for. And even just flicking through and seeing the illustrations is making me smell childhood viscerally. Next is a little hidden gem. 
Jeb. Next is a little hidden gem. This is Scoob Books, which is literally just books backwards. Um, this is a very hidden gem of a bookshop. It's mainly based in a basement, but it's actually, again, quite near King's Cross. If you know to look for it, you will find it. This is mainly secondhand books. Um, it's got a really big theatre section, actually, and some lots of antiquated books and really, like, specific finds. I didn't find anything in this bookshop this time around, but Craig found a vintage Asterix book that he has been reading before bed every night since, so I'm very happy for him. The third place we went was Gay's the Word, uh, famed for its appearance in Pride, which is a true story, and there's lots of homage uh, to the story and the buttons and lots of the kind of paraphernalia of the amazing history of Gaze the Word, if you haven't looked it up, um, is there. Uh, it's a lovely, lovely place. And it was very fitting that I walked straight to the poetry section and saw a name that's been coming up quite frequently for me on the internet in various different places. I'm stumbling um, across Jay's name when I'm like listening to podcasts, bought an essay collection the other day, and Jay's bloody essay was in it and you know when somebody's work just keeps popping up on your timeline you're like how is this happening so jay holm is a trans poet who became a christian converted to christianity after having nothing to do with it just before the pandemic struck in 2019 and when i saw some of the titles for the poems i was literally like you're coming home with me this is a sign um plague baptism atheist out of necessity saint margaret's bus station god is a capitalist graveyard earth seeking trans ancestors in our old provincial graveyards i i i just cannot contain how excited i am to read this poetry collection and i had to pick up some kind of poetry collection on my walk especially because my one's coming out in july i'm like we've got to accumulate as much poetry in this house as possible i want this bloody house to be buzzing with poetry as soon as so um i was really really excited about this one and because it features some writing about the pandemic as well which i think i am just about ready to read about um i was so excited to just stumble upon that one and um can't wait then we went to london review of books this is one of the bookshops i have probably the most memories in it's where i spent a lot of time organizing launches when i was but a tiny little press assistant who had just moved to london and it always has like a great selection of non-fiction right at the front of the shop it's very rare that um bookshops have like their non-fiction at the front i don't know why it's also a fave because it actually has like a decent toilet in central London and a really nice cake filled coffee shop attached to it um so we had we had to go we had to go and because I hadn't been there in so long the thing that I had to pick up was one of their writing anthologies so London Review of Books is also and I think first was a uh, news newspaper about books basically if I want to put it in a non partial way. And they periodically publish some of the essays they've commissioned for the newspaper, or for the review of books, journal, into these small anthologies that are six quid. This one is called Royal Bodies, writing about the Windsors, which is one of my weird, guilty, indulgent um, <laughs> areas of interest. Venn diagram of Marxists who are obsessed with the royal family. <laughs> Anyone? The only name I recognise in this is, is Hilary Mantel, who wrote the title essay Royal Bodies. But some of the essay titles are just, they just really pull my strings and I had to pick it up. One is about as useful as a string condom, <laughs> ghosts in the palace, the great times they could have had, and you have a nice country. I would like to be your son. I will report back on what I think about this one. The anthologies are sometimes hit or miss for me, but this one sounds like it genuinely is going to be up my street and I'm really, really excited to read it. And then the final stop on the bookshop tour. Yes, we started early, but we did only get around five, mainly because Craig could not remove me from foils. Foils, if you don't know, is one of the biggest bookshops in central London. It's got five floors and each floor is huge and themed around like a huge topic. It always has, it used to be independent, RIP, uh, but it always does have an amazing selection of stuff that you can tell is curated by the booksellers because it's not like any of the other bookshops. And I always find stuff that I haven't seen anywhere else. And as somebody who spends most of their time either poking through physical bookshops or poking through bookshops online, 
that's saying something. So here are the ones that I painstakingly picked out after about three hours. The first one I picked up for the cover alone at first, it's called All's Well by Mona Award. I mean, what? <laughs> I need to file a complaint because this book needs to put a coat on. It's just, it's too blinding. I found out when I looked in the back that it's actually designed by Pip Watkins, who is a fellow booktuber and lovely friend. Um, she's in a book club with me actually. And I, as soon as I realized that, I immediately texted her and was like, oh my God, I can't believe you made this. Not only is the cover cool, but let me tell you a little bit about the premise. It's about a fallen Shakespearean actress who has turned into a a lecturer and reluctant professor uh, because she was injured while uh, in a production of All's Well That Ends Well, which is one of Shakespeare's, I guess, more niche plays. She has a mutinous cast of students who really want to put on Macbeth and hate the idea of doing all well, all's well that ends well, but she feels like it's gonna be this healing experience and um, it deals a lot with the idea of chronic pain, women not being believed by doctors about pain and the kind of immersive um, bodily exhaustion she feels from having a chronic illness. But one night she goes into a bar and meets three mysterious strangers with ethereal vibes and um, her life starts getting pretty eerie. Uh, I can tell you that for certain because I've already read it. Um, this is the first one I read. I think I started reading it a couple of days after we got back. It's such an immersive, really well-written book. It's kind of like Black Swan meets Shakespeare in love, I guess. You don't need to know that much about Shakespeare to appreciate it, but if you like the idea of like an atmospheric theater vibe with a mix of psychological thriller slash Faustian unexplained sinister vibes, then I would advise that you pick this up stat. Then, because I need to indulge things I want to read about in this short, short life, I picked up this book that I'd already put on Instagram months ago saying I regretted I hadn't bought it. It's a crime book by Nancy Spain and it's called Cinderella Goes to the Morgue. It's pretty much what it sounds like. It's a cosy murder mystery set at Christmas where the cast members of a panto keep getting killed off and nobody knows who's doing it. I don't know about you, but that sounds like an ideal night to me and I cannot wait. I need to indulge my cosy crime curiosities more and I'd like to read more books set in theatres, so this ticks all the boxes for me. Next, I went to the YA section, having a bit of a YA kick at the moment. Goldie Mordaski wrote one of my favorite YA books of all time, which is <laughs> Kill the Boy Band, which is about four fangirls who meet on an online forum, go to a gig of like the this famous <laughs> band that's kind of coded as being like One Direction, and they stay in the same hotel as the band because they've stalked them. And when they're staying in the hotel, shenanigans ensue and they accidentally kill one of the band members. The next part of the book is just, sorry, I can't even. The rest of the book is them trying to cover up the fact that they've murdered one of their heroes, but it's really dark and really funny. Um, so I just, I really wanted to read more from Goldie. I've just started, I had to interview her basically for this um, showcase I was doing with Electric Monkey. So I was reading her new book, um, which is <laughs> Lord of the Fly Fest. And it's about um, influencers who go to something um, a lot like the fire festival and um, and start killing each other. Uh, and I just love the daring premises that I would think of, but I would never actually attempt to write. And the fact that she goes through and writes them in such a skilled and funny way makes me laugh a lot. Anyway, I really wanted to pick up this one. It's called Eat Dirt. It's one of her older ones. And it is about a summer camp <laughs> called Camp Save the World, in which teenagers are taught to be activists, but they're also taught to like compete against each other. And it sounds like it's kind of satiring this idea of voyeuristic campaigning <laughs> online. And um, it sounds like it's gonna be good for my soul. <laughs> my dark, dark, chucklesome. <laughs> slightly questionable soul. And then finally, again, one that got me for the cover, The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. Look at it, look at it. It's about a man who um, has collected loads of lost property over his life and then dies and leaves um, his housekeeper with a mysterious task of what to do with all the lost things once 
he's dead. I just started reading this last night. Very intriguing so far. And I also just want to offer a round of applause for whoever did these cover redesigns. They've redesigned each of her covers with a similar setup of like a dress with some of the objects around it and they're all in miniature. I think they've actually been made in miniature and then photographed, but I just, these, I really hope I love this author because I would love to collect the whole set of those. Like, what the hell is that? Thank you so much for watching. I'm resisting the urge to apologize for being ill because that's not something I believe in. Normal videos will resume when I am fully recovered. Uh, until then, I don't know what you'll get next time. I will be uploading, but God knows what it will be. I'm gonna put a picture of this on my Instagram. So if you would like to see what Craig's original plan for the bookshop tour was, you can do that there. And if you're already cozied up with your tea and your blanket and you don't want this video to end and you wanna keep watching cozy videos about books, I've got whole bloody playlists of those over here. Don't worry, stay where you are. Thank you so much <coughs> for watching. Thank you to the Gumption Club for making um, these videos possible. And if you are in the mood to buy a book, you can pre-order mine. It's called Bargain Bin Rom-Com. You can do that from any of your local bookshops probably I'll leave the links on how to do that below or you can order it online anywhere in the bloody world. Frog snug out.